Hello guys, this is Dr. Emmanuel Wogu, um, an ST3 general practice trainee in North Devon, United Kingdom. And as part of one of my leadership projects, actually I made this for myself primarily, and then I found that it's really helpful and I decided to share with my colleagues in North Devon and other deaneries in the United Kingdom. So just to show you what it's all about, this is a website I designed um, with the aim of collating, you know, putting together different commonly used or commonly referenced guidelines, both for the purposes of diagnosis, aiding, aiding diagnosis and treatment. As you may know, or if you don't know, you're hearing it now, most GP practices in the United Kingdom have 10 to 15 minutes per consultation. So, you know, you're seeing the patient. Sometimes it's enough, you know, patients come in with simple things like, you know, a single mole or an eczema, okay. something you could comfortably sort out in five, six, seven minutes. Sometimes you have really complex patients who come into your surgery. Some of them tell you, doctor, um, you know, from the entrance, they say, oh, a couple of things, you know, and your, your heart sinks like, oh, I've got 10, 15 minutes to sort out a couple of things. And then it starts going on and on and on. And sometimes it's very helpful to have quick access to reference guides or reference materials um, when you find yourself, you know, needing to double check or triple check or just cross check certain things. Um, it could be, it could be the dosage of medications, it could be the the first line, you know, treatment guideline, or you've tried the first line, you've tried the second line, you're thinking, what next should I be trying for this patient? Um, so I've put together some external links there. You can see the British National Formulary, BNF, the North and East Devon Formulary, because I'm in North Devon, and this is our local formulary that helps us in diagnosis and choice of treatment. This is a very popular um, primary care you know, resource in the United Kingdom, GP Notebook, um, NICE, CKS, Sign Guideline, which is the Scottish Intercollegiate, you know, um, network, with the, um, which is like a Scottish, you know, NICE guideline, you know, putting it simply. Uh, the New England Journal of Medicine, if you're someone who really likes to read about, um, you know, articles and journals, uh, research findings and things like that, you might find this helpful or you might need a subscription to have full access to New England Journal of Medicine. And then our popular 14 fish portfolio, every GP trainee in the United Kingdom should have this. So if you click on, on the BNF, it takes you to, an, to a separate tab. You can see I've made it to take you to a separate tab so you can always go back in without having to use the back button. You don't really need to press back. It takes you to a separate tab. You have your BNF, same thing. If you click on the North and East Devon formulary, it opens up. You know, and you can have quick access to that. If you go to your GP notebook, you have quick access to your GP notebook. Same thing as in sign guideline. The New England Journal of Medicine, same thing. You can sign in there um, and have access to articles. And I've also done it this way so that even if your 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 cursor is away from the away from the text, you can still choose. So from here, you can still open my 14 fish. Okay, and I can always log into my 14 fish and, and things like that. So this is the layout, compendium of guidelines. As I said earlier, I made this for myself, um, you know, as I'm preparing towards writing, towards sitting my, uh, my SCA, the simulated consultation assessment. So I put all these guidelines together to help myself improve my consultation and time management. So a very useful way of making use of these resource is, is either you go here and go to find on page and this comes up, or you can use the shortcut control plus F and then you can put anything there, COPD, and it takes you straight to COPD. Of course, if you go to the second one, asthma slash COPD inhaler formulations. So you have, you have these here, you can choose you know, um, various inhaler formulations you want. And if you think you want more, you know, you want to you want to find more information, you can just quickly go, go back to the top and you could go to maybe one of the guidelines there. You could say maybe nice CKS or BNF, you could go into BNF and you could go to um, 
maybe treatment summaries. You can probably type in COPD there. Um, yeah, treatment summary of COPD, and then you have access, quick access to, you know, um, information on the NICE CKS, NICE guideline. You can always go back here. You can always go back to the COPD guideline. You have a quick look. You know, um, this was extracted from the NICE guideline, as you can see. You know, so this is essentially how you can manage COPD, uh, things to consider, you know, so step by step, you know, um, and, you know, I had a patient with Addison's who, who I was thinking wasn't well, yet at the point of crisis, but I, I felt she had a physiological stress, a physiologic stress. She had, I recently had a diarrhea vomiting, um, was feeling really lethargic, was having, you know, she was feeling rubbish, feeling lethargic, but she wasn't, you know, having a uh, postural, postural, you know, dizziness or, you know, all of her dizziness or palpitations and, wasn't collapsing either. So she wasn't in Addisonian crisis, but she needed, she had not obeyed the sick rule or she had not you know, complied by the sick rule uh, of doubling the dose of an oral hydrocortisone and things like that. So you know, that made me feel like, yeah, I, I really want to have quick access to the sick day rule for patients who have, um, you know, hypo adrenalism, you know, and at risk of Addisonian crisis. So what do you do? Double your hydrocortisone if you've got the temperature of these. And when do you have to use the hydrocortisone injections, you know, and what the adult steroid can looks like for patients who have, you know, steroids, like chronic steroids, um, or rheumatoid arthritis, or even Addisonian crisis who are on steroids, you know, um, hydrocortisone, um, you know, um, fluidrocortisone and other forms of steroid. So just, you know, common things, acne management, you know, um, psoriasis you're looking you're seeing a patient with psoriasis just quickly type in psoriasis it takes you to adult psoriasis management algorithm you can see that so that's a guideline you can see pediatric psoriasis what are the options so trunk and limb psoriasis face flexures genital scalp you know that steroid use of steroid in small these sensitive areas the thin and sensitive skin scalp is very thick you might need a more potent you know a very potent steroid you can see so it just gives you you know the vitamin d analogs you know, calcipotriol and things like that. It just gives you that quick, you're not really struggling. Oh, I know calcipotriol, but what? Now you're thinking, okay, calcipotriol, how much calcipotriol should I use? How long should I use it for? It says review at two weeks. So quick access to information. Well score for DVT. Okay, so you, you've seen a patient query DVT. Before the patient comes, you just type in wells. You can always just go down. So well score for DVT. And then the patient comes in and you want to calculate the patient's actual well score. I'll put a link there. You can see that. So you can just have this on your screen. You know, these are the questions I need to explore. The patient has a recent malignancy, you know, um, calf swelling, collateral, in, on examination of collateral superficial veins, so non-varicose veins, because if it's varicose, it tells you likely chronic venous, superficial venous distension. If it's non-varicose, it tells you it's likely an acutely distended superficial vein. So things like that, you know, then you have quick access to that. Same thing with the well score for pulmonary embolism. These are the questions to consider. You want to check patients when you go in through that link. Well score, you can always zoom that in. And the patient clinical science, so you have to yes, or PE. Uh, pulmonary like e equally or likely, yeah. Heart rate, maybe 110, yeah. Immobilization, maybe no. Previously objective, no. Hemoptysis, no. Malignancy, no. And then you say, okay, so 7.5. And then what next? Okay, so high risk. So what it means is you need to be treating this patient as pulmonary embolism antiprovenal otherwise. You can go back to your guideline for two week quick referrals for suspected bowel cancer. So if the patient is having altered bowel motions or weight loss, you think it could use with bowel cancer, and you want to possibly refer urgently for a colonoscopy, then you have to check do they meet the referral guidelines quickly. If you're thinking of doing a Q fit for a patient, you know, just you know, suspected breast cancer. I recently had a young lady, 18 year old with you know, breast changes, structural breast changes. Look, going by this guideline alone, she probably very likely wouldn't meet the referral criteria. I mean, I've seen a patient with bilateral breast cancer at the age of 18, um, you know, with metastasis to her brain. So everything is possible. So I discussed with one of the, you know, experienced GPs, we agreed that we should do, do a, you know, an urgent breast referral. And luckily, you know, she had a scan and was almost fine, you know? 
And that doesn't mean that having a scan and ultrasound of your breast is completely confirmation or confirmatory or completely exclusive or you know, it doesn't completely exclude a breast cancer. So if she comes back, we'll have to review again. So it just gives you that quick access to materials. Ottawa Row, I think I'll add a link there in case someone wants to actually calculate you know, the Ottawa, Ottawa score for their patients. I'll add a link there. Um, same thing with that for Anko, you know, Canadian City Head. Yeah, probably add, add a link there. But I mean, your City Head is very straightforward. Um, osteoporosis prevention, like patient with osteoporosis or suspected oste or osteopenia, you're thinking of fracture prevention, primary secondary fracture prevention. This is from the SIGN guideline. This is, I got, this is actually from SIGN. Um, and this is the FRAC score. If you want to do a FRAC score, the patient is on steroid, the patient is frail, or you know, that you want to check their risk of, of, of risk of osteoporosis and fragility fractures. And then this is the score, the FRAC score. And it takes you, if you click on that link, it takes you to the FRAC score. And this is United Kingdom. You can always change the country. Uh, yeah, you can always change your country, North America, for instance, US, Canada. So if you're using this material in the US, you just change that to the US. Why is you change is United Kingdom and it shows you the flag of the country. Put the patient's details in, you know, and you click on calculate. And it gives you the patient's facts. And if you move there and then the NOG interpretation, usually you need both of them. Um, we are working in North Level, you need to submit you to attach this fact score and this NOG interpretation that shows. You know, do this with the X where the patient actually falls. It shows you where the patient actually falls. Um, so in this case, high risk we need to treat as a possible osteoporosis. And of course, you need to be referring for that patient to have a bone mineral density, you know, DEXA scan. If you go to the bottom of this website, let's go down to the bottom. I've added a few links that take, these links will take you to my YouTube channel. So there's a video I made on AKT Insight and there's another video I made on TRCOG, the Diploma of Royal College of Obstetrics and Gynecology. So Insights, so if you click on this, it takes you to a separate tab and takes you to my... Skip this. It takes you to... It takes you to my YouTube video. Okay. okay. If you click on this other link, it takes you to my video. The one who wants to do diploma in the Royal College and uh, Ecology. All right. And if you takes you back to the top. Okay, this is something I think could be very helpful um, for, 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 for doctors who are still in their foundation year, F1, F2, um, you know, interns in other countries, um, primary care physicians, and even primary care uh, trainees or resident doctors, you know, in the US, Canada, wherever in the United Kingdom. I think this is something that could actually help improve your efficiency in consultations. Thanks for watching and listening to the end. Thank you.